And how are you, uh, everyone? This is Reverend Jess Vogelsong from TouchedByGodChurch.com. We're online, and uh, we have a very interesting uh, lesson today in, in continuation. Um, and our lesson is called, our message is called, God Became a Redeemer in Jesus Christ. God is with us today. Thanks to the Redeemer of Israel. Without the Redeemer, the Christ, God would have probably left the scene by now, as our modern society is no doubt has not put God first. In my opinion, the world has put God aside, basically banning him from the scene, covered his face, taking him off the pedestal, and instead raising the nationalistic flag. God continues to be with us through, the, through His grace and love, through His promise of eternal life. The same covenant that was established when He spoke to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jacob. And to the remnant people that kept their, their faith after being freed from Babylon by the Persian king Cyrus, another type of savior. God had to find a way to salvage a lost offspring. His righteous character was at stake. He could not simply allow his sinful people to come back into his realm, his kingdom, without paying a penalty. He had to devise a way that would suffice and satisfy the rest of his kingdom, his realm, his created beings, good and bad. Knowing that if he was arbitrary and wishy-washy, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, would make it known to his entire kingdom that he was not worthy of being God, being the ultimate ruler of the kingdom. Therefore, he devised the only way that would suffice. He would intercede himself into the human stream and become a man. He would illustrate this plan within the life of and history of the Israelites. The story of the Jewish nation would become an example, an illustration of the future Redeemer. All of Israel would be within one man, representative of mankind, Redeemer of a lost mankind, the Christ, the Son of God. After the remnant of Israel re rebuilt the temple in, the, in Jerusalem, they soon came under the rule of Rome. And as the years passed, again, the elite of the Jewish echelon be began to put God second. Although the rituals and the ceremonies were kept, they became self-righteous and corrupt. God decided, yes, it was time to intercede in the stream of human life. And um, let's take a look at that. We thank God for His persistence in securing our standing in the community of, of the living. We, we have been lost due to sin, separated from the Father. But since then, our ransom was, has been paid by a Redeemer, the Christ of God. And we, are now, and we are now back in the running to the finish line. Our goal, like many of God's illustrations, animals migrating home to their place, of creation of birth to come home to the Father and to the security of His loving kingdom. Well, God knew it was not going to be easy. A plan had to be devised in order to satisfy His laws and at the same time redeem a lost group of people, the human race. He decided to come to earth and blend in with humans. He chose a group of people in the middle of the, a desert and gave them rules to follow. And one day, after thousands of years of showing and illustrating his, his ways and character, he chose one couple and announced to them through his trusted archangel, Gabriel, that an infant would be born out of an immaculate conception. To name 
him, Jesus, he placed his seed into the woman's womb. And from that moment was part of the human stream of life. He became the mediator, the redeemer. He grew up as a normal child in the Jewish community and studied and learned all of the traditions and rituals of the land, especially the Torah, the Jewish Bible. His early life was not eventful. He did not realize who he was, the son of, the son of God. He knew that he was different from the rest of the children. And as he grew into a young man, he could feel the calling of his father. There was a sense of journey of wanting to see the world around him and visit the people near and in distant lands. By the time he became a man, he had already become well-versed in carpentry and made a good living in his community as a carpenter, Jesus the carpenter. As the years went by, though, though he, he very quietly and silently traveled and moved throughout the region, observing and listening to the people of the world. At the same time, he was covering all, he was discovering who he really was. Discovering who he really was. Part of the Father in Heaven. He came to the realization that he was special, that he was on earth for a specific reason, that he was the, what God had been showing and illustrating to all for thousands of years in the ceremony of the sacrificial lamb. He realized that he was who, he was who, Isaiah wrote about. He was the true sacrificial lamb a servant of the Father and to mankind. Isaiah 42, verse 1. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. It made him even more focused knowing and understanding his responsibilities to his father as well as to the entire human race. And as he traveled, meeting and engaging with a multitude of nations, cities, communities, and ordinary people, he knew that the time would come when he would have to return to his place of origin, to face his own countrymen, to begin to do the will of the Father. First of all, to be to be baptized by water, by his cousin John, to be officially welcomed by the Father as the Christ, after which he immediately removed himself from the scene by entering the remote desert to deal with Satan, to be tempted. Just as the people of Israel did 400 years earlier, he now would assume all of the responsibilities of an entire nation in himself. He became the Christ, and after 40 years, I'm sorry, after 40 days and nights, 40 days and nights, dealing with the devil, he returned to their region to begin his ministry of showing, disclosing, and revealing the true character of his Father in Heaven. By then, he had reached the age of 30. He was ready. The will of the Father was imprinted in his mind. He became the teacher, the counselor, the miracle worker, the healer, the fisher of men, a rabbi of rabbis. He traveled through the land of Israel announcing that the kingdom of God is within the midst of all who believe. And as he traveled, he slowly won the trust of many. He formed a group of 12 men and called them his disciples, apostles one for each twelve tribe of Israel. And they travel with him, learning and gaining knowledge of who he was, and most of all, who really was his Father in Heaven. Alright, we'll stop there and, uh, and uh, continue the next time. Again, well, thanks for dropping in. And... Uh, uh, and taking in some of this 
interesting uh, messages from the Holy Spirit, of course. The Holy Spirit is with us today. As when Jesus left, he said, I, you know, I can't, I must leave, otherwise the Spirit, the Comforter, will not come. And he is with us today and um, passing on vital information of the Christ Jesus as well as the Father in Heaven. So, um, thanks again for dropping in. God's blessings to you and yours today.